Okay, now we're going to take a look at the logic we need to go and get an individual activity. Now, we're either going to have this activity in memory because we're accessing it from, let's go back to the activities page. If we click on one of these links, then because we've got our activities in this list, then of course, if we click on this button here, then we should be able to get the activity from memory. However, if somebody refreshes this page, then that's a bit different because we're not going to have the list of activities in memory. So we would need to make a call to the API to go and get it. And we'll handle both different occasions here. Of course, if we have the activity in memory, there's no need to go to our API. So what we'll do is we'll head back to our activity store. So let's open this as we're going to need a method in there to go and get an individual activity from our API. So we've got our load activities and below this one, what we'll do is we'll say load activity. And this is going to be an async method and it's going to take an ID of the string of the activity. So the first thing we want to do is check to see if we have the activity in memory. So what we're going to do is say let activity equals and we're going to want to check our registry to see if we have this. And one way we can do this, and I'm going to create a private helper method just below our load activity here. So I'm going to say private and get activity. And this is going to take an ID, which is going to be a string. And in this method, all we're going to do is say return list.activityRegistry.get and check to see if we have the ID or pass the ID to this particular method. Now this get method is going to return either the activity or it's going to return undefined. So what we'll do is say load activity inside here, we'll say let activity equals list.get activity and we'll pass in the ID as a parameter there. And if we have the activity, then all we're going to do here is say list.selected activity is equal to the activity that we get from our registry. And then this is selected and we can make use of this in our activity details component without needing to load anything from our API. And we'll also add an else condition here. And in the else condition, what we'll do is we'll turn on our loading initial flag. We'll set this equal to true. And after this, we'll add a try catch block as at this point, we'll go and make a call to our API and we'll just add the usual console.log and pass in the error in the catch block. But in the try block, what we'll do is we'll set our activity to await and we'll say agent.activities.details and we'll pass in the ID of the activity. And then what we want to do is update our activity registry and we also want to set the dates of the activity as well. Now we've already got the code to do both of these things inside our load activities. So what we'll do is we'll create another private helper method and we'll say private and we'll call this one set activity. And this is going to take an activity as its parameter of type activity. And inside here, what we're going to do is simply copy this code and paste it inside our set activity. And then what we can do is go back up to our load activities and replace this code inside here with say this dot set activity and then we can just pass in the activity. And of course this is doing the same thing as it was before. But the advantage of this is that we may start to see warnings from MobX telling us that we're trying to modify an observable outside of an action because what's going on in here is happening in the next tick. Now, I didn't personally see any warnings in my console earlier. Probably should have done from what we've done, but we may start seeing them a bit later. So this avoids that problem because now this action, because it's inside its own function, is going to be picked up and set as an action in MobX. And we can also use this function now after we've got our activity back from the API. So we can say this dot set activity and pass in the activity. And then we can say this dot set loading initial and set this to false. And remember we created this helper function earlier.
and we'll also turn off our loading if we get an error and this should be this set loading initial. So with this code in place we no longer need and let's start cleaning up some of the methods we don't need anymore in here. So for selecting an activity all of these methods were used for displaying the contents on a single page rather than using our routing. So we don't actually need any of these methods anymore. So the select activity, cancel selected, open form, close form can all go. So I'm just going to delete those and see if we've got any errors inside our store from doing so. And we have one. And we added this logic just in case the activity was being displayed on the page. But since we're routing now, we no longer need that line of code in there. So that can go as well. And we're going to have other problems in our app. So let's take a look at our app.tsx, see if there's any issues in there. There isn't. Let's go to our activity dashboard. And this one also looks OK. But in our activity details and our activity form, then we're going to see some errors. So let's remove the problematic code from inside here, inside the activity details. And we'll also remove this or the on-click events from both of these buttons here as well. So let's just remove this code in here as well in the activity details I'm in just now. And we'll also need to clean up something inside the activity form as well because we've got our closed form inside here which we have now removed and we also need to remove the on click from this as well. We'll do something slightly different to replace the on click events in here because we've got routing now. We'll change these soon to take us to a different location rather than that. So let's just make sure we don't have any errors in our app and I'll just refresh the page and we'll go back to our activities. We're still seeing the loading indicator. We've got a bit more work to do there, but we're not seeing any errors in our app. And let's just double check the console. And we've just got a single warning in our nav bar. And let's just go and clean that up while we're here and open up the nav bar. And we can remove the unused activity store. And then we can remove the use store inside our nav bar. And what we'll take a look at next is, and let's just refresh this page, but what we'll take a look at next is making sure that we actually get an activity when we click on that view button.